Ministry report uh, submitted the final report to Union Finance Ministry and it recommends the strategy for accelerating growth of digital payments in India. It also calls for need of safeguarding security of digital transactions, interoperability of payment system between banks and non-banks and also upgradation of digital payment infrastructure and institutions. To get more into that, we also are now joined by Jonathan Dharabalan, who is the CEO and founder of eCurrencies. Uh, Jonathan, hi, good to have you. You know, the committee has come out with the recommendations for making a digital fiat currency as well. How are you looking into it? The important thing is that there is a government backing and legal tender capability uh, that works in a digital currency environment. Um, what we have done is taken the precepts of the law itself and turned it into a digital format so that the sole issuer, as the government of India and as the central bank, is able to issue a known amount of digital fiat currency that they can then put into circulation. Mm. Jonathan, also, the plus is if this comes in, it would be the legal tender and the central bank would have a control over it, which is not the case when it comes to other cryptocurrencies like the Bitcoin or Ethereum for that matter. Well, India is in a very interesting place right now. They are on the very digital frontier. We have a government and a public that's committed to a digital transformation and uh, a digital currency is the next new big step and the commitment that India has made through demonetization and going digital sets the stage beautifully for a country like India to move forward. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, also how different would uh, the e-rupee concept as that is what you are presenting to the regulator and the ministry as well from the existing digital gateways that we already have and what all devices would it really work on? Well, this, it is very important that we start with the legal precepts that make a digital India rupee possible. And those are the same legal precepts that enable India to issue a physical fiat currency. Once you start with that, this currency has to be governed properly, it has to be secure, it has to be legal tender, and at the end of the day, there has to be full common and open access. So everyone can transact in it with the simplest of mobile phones, with the simplest of technology, they should be able to transact in it. This openness is ultimately what will make this currency a very powerful instrument in the hands of the public. Mm. And finally, before we let you go, you have been holding talks with RBI and the ministry as well. Where does it stand as of now and how soon can this really be a possibility? What's happening on the front, you can already see there are uh, published reports about the commitment on the part of the leadership in India to move to the towards a digital fiat currency. The government will decide when the right time is to do that and they will act at their own course. The important thing though is that the technology is ready, the standards have been set, the security work has already been done, it can be tested at any given point and the Ratal committee report has already uh, given a timeline for this to be uh, uh, tested and rolled out and I believe in the next three to four months, they have made a commitment that we will start to see the impact of a government-issued uh, digital fiat currency. All right, Jonathan, we will keep an eye on this one for the next three to four months. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us a sense of that. But with that, it's a wrap up on this edition.